Hello? A lonely beggar. So the story lay drunk and shivering in the mid uh, slime of the of the drainage ditch in Peking, China. Throughout the night hours as he grew closer to death, the beggar's plight went either unnoticed or ignored by the few passerby. Finally, as darkness gave to the light of dawn, a stranger saw him and reached out in compassion. After gently lifting the cold and fallen frame of the man out of the ditch, the stranger took him to his home. The beggar was nursed back to, the, to health as the compassionate stranger told him about the Savior who had come to this world to pull the lost souls out of the pit of despair and eternal darkness. A Savior who came to give abundant life. The beggar received Christ into his life and went on to become China's first national preacher of the gospel. Years and years later, Hudson Taylor met, met this the great grandchild of this, who's an evangelist, of a man who was left unnoticed and dying on the streets. Picked him up. And the story goes on like this, that before the man, I mean, it was a generation of vagabonds, of people who were living on the streets, who had no direction in life. But just one man was picked up, given Christ, restored his soul, was able <laughs> to give birth to a generation of doctors, evangelists, pastors, lawyers, Christian lawyers. Generations. And the man became the first evangelist in China. So God loves the generations. Now, I'm going to repeat just a few, go through. The Bible says that since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. I've known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, that he may bring to Abraham what he has spoken. Every Think that God dropped in your heart. Everything that God spoke to you once and your, your children depends on how you raise this child. Three of them. How you allow God to become this, the head and the source of information and instruction in that family. It's needless to mention, we can see in, our, in the nation, things are changing. You can never depend on one political whatever, whatever, but it, things will always change. The governments that we have, they've got terms, five-year terms, ten-year terms, but the God that we serve has got no term absolute. Absolutely, there's got no term. Now, the word generations, God was saying, otherwise, otherwise, sorry, let me begin by saying, God was saying to Abraham, Abraham, all the promises, remember he spoke, I mean, he gave, me, gave him promises in chapter 12. He says, leave your, uh, your kindred, leave your own country, leave your own people, and go to your land. I will do this to you. I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. He said, all those things that I said to you, they depend on how you instruct your people because my promises are not just only for you to benefit. I am the God of generations. I want the generations that are going to come after you to be instructed in justice, in righteousness, and keep my ways so that I fulfill every promise that I uttered with my mouth. That's why when you hear 
read whatever is about the Jews. In most of the cities, let me not go to other countries, speak about our own country. They are... When I talk about a person who's rich, I say, yes, but they are rich, the Jews. I mean, we must not be jealous about that. It's a promise. Amen. It is a promise that was promised by God. Now, the same, the God that we serve speaks about generations. Hello. Amen. Now, the word generations is mentioned in the Bible more than 700 times. I'm just thinking. When something has been mentioned like this in the Bible, to think that God that is is the, truly the God that is interested in generations, do me. Amen. The God that we serve. Now, now, we carry you and I in this house, young or old, middle-aged or whatever, we are carrying the torch of God's presence. Why? I looked at the ANC while they were carrying the torch. And that torch, they say, we've just finished 100 years, 101, and this year is 102. Am I right? It's 102. 102. But they always talk about the torch. But the torch is coming from the Bible. You know, we, you and I, we are carrying, busy carrying the torch of God's presence. Making sure that this torch, we, we pass it on to the next generation. That torch must keep burning. Go, 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 must carry the same torch. Why, Barcelona? The organization can speak our own language. Tina. We, as God's people, we cannot understand our own language. They understand our own language better than we can, we can understand it. In other words, why are they lighting up that torch and carrying it up? They are saying, next generation, here's a torch. Here's a legacy. We pass it on to you. Keep it up. We are carrying the very same I mean, torch that we must pass on to the next generations. And we are expected to lift it up high and establish its glory wherever we are ministering. I'm not talking about full-time workers. I'm talking about families. I'm talking about individuals. Wherever you are, make sure that God's presence is lifted up. God's torch is lifted up. You do not just hide. 